This is not the video I plan to make. I was trying to make a video comparing two different ways of adding NVMe SSD drives to a Raspberry Pi 5, but this turned out not to be quite as simple as it first sounded. I was almost pulling my hair out with frustration through a combination of my own silly mistake and a Raspberry Pi that just wouldn't work. The combination of these has been a frustrating experience to say the least. Hopefully this video will help you if you're wanting to add an SSD to your own Raspberry Pi. I'll still provide a comparison of the different ways of adding an SSD, but this video is going to cover the problems I faced. Before I get into the problems and the review of the different boards, I'll start with a bit of an explanation. When the Raspberry Pi first came out, one of the most exciting new features is a small connector near the SD card slot. Getting a bit closer, you can see it says PCIe, which stands for Peripheral Component Interconnect Express Port. PCIe is often used in laptops and desktop computers for add-ons such as solid state drives, SSDs and Wi-Fi adapters, etc. Along with firmware updates for the Raspberry Pi, it allows booting from an NVMe drive on the Raspberry Pi as well. And this provides a way to boot straight from the SSD without needing a microSD card in the Raspberry Pi. When the Raspberry Pi 5 was released, we were told that there was a PCI hat in development and that would allow SSDs to be connected. However, there was no indication of when that would be. I did want to use an SSD with the Raspberry Pi and I even had a spare SSD I was going to use, or so I thought anyway. The Raspberry Pi hat was not forthcoming and some other manufacturers had created their own boards, including the Eden VME base from Pimeroni. But initially, I was waiting for the official Raspberry Pi hat to be released. However, six months later, with no sign of the Raspberry Pi 1 being made available, I decided to buy one of the Pimeroni ones instead. I put one in my basket, but didn't get as far as actually clicking to place the order. Although I had what I thought would be a suitable drive, I was aware that there were some problems with certain drives. So I decided to order a base that came with a hat that was guaranteed to work. It was a good price at £57 for a 500 gigabyte drive. It was only a few pounds more than a cheap similar SSD on Amazon, and this included the NVMe base with it. By pure coincidence, the day after I'd almost placed the order for the Pimeroni base, the official Raspberry Pi Hat Plus was released. So I went back to my basket, added an official Raspberry Pi M.2 Hat Plus board alongside the NVMe base and compatible SSD drive. I plan to use the small drive I currently had as a replacement for my home server, as that already had a 4TB external disk. I thought I could just put the OS on the SSD and keep the data on the external drive. My first mistake was not realising that I would need an extra active cooler. I already had an active cooler on one of my Raspberry Pi 5s, the other relying on the fan in an official Raspberry Pi case. The problem being that the Pimeroni base wouldn't fit in a Raspberry Pi case and the Raspberry Pi hat would prevent me using the active fan. Something I should have been aware of from the details of the launch of the hat, but didn't check. That turned out to be my most minor mistake during this endeavour. By the time I'd figured out all the problems, I'd already got a new active cooler. The parts arrived and here they are with the Pimeroni NVMe board, an ADATA SSD on the left and the Raspberry Pi hat on the right. It became clear that the SSD drive provided with the Pimeroni base was too big for the Raspberry Pi board although I would later try it with some Velcro to hold the SSD in place. Essentially, the full-size 2280 drive would only be used with the Pimeroni base. I think the Pimeroni NVMe base is pretty ingenious. It mounts under the Raspberry Pi, just connecting to the PCIe connector. Here it is mounted on my electronics breadboard stand that I designed, and as you can see, all the GPIO pins are still available. The photo on the right shows the board under the Raspberry Pi. There is a downside in that it won't fit in most cases and it's hard to get to the SD card as well as the SSD drive once mounted without needing to first assemble the PCB mounts. But other than that, it's pretty good. I flashed the EEPROM with the new version and it detected the drive straight away. Initially, I booted from an SD card, then installed the OS on the SSD using the Raspberry Pi imager, updated the boot order in Raspberry Pi config, 
and remove the micro SD card. And as simple as that, it would boot directly from the SSD. That was the last thing that seemed to go right. So this is the SSD that I tried with a Raspberry Pi M.2 hat plus. I didn't realize the significance at the time, but there are two notches known as keys on the M.2 connector rather than the one on the NVMe SSD that came from Pimeroni. Although having that extra notch isn't in itself an indicator that it, there's anything wrong. As I have an adapter for a SATA drive that only has an M key but works fine with an M.2 SATA drive with both the M and B keys. Anyway, unaware that this was the wrong type of disk, I tried it in the Raspberry Pi and it wasn't able to detect the SSD. As this SSD was taken out of an old media center, I wasn't sure I could rely on it anyway. So thinking it was maybe a faulty drive, I decided to get a new drive. I searched for an M.2 SSD and came up with this inexpensive Transcend SSD. It's only 120 gigabytes, but I thought this is going to be useful for the server with the, as it's got the external drive, then that's big enough. I plugged into the Raspberry Pi M.2 Heart Plus, and again, this didn't work. Having not had any drive work in the Raspberry Pi Heart Plus, I also tried the ADATA drive from Pimeroni, and that one didn't work either. I turned to the Raspberry Pi forum and asked whether other people had had similar experiences and got a quick response that the Transcend SSD was actually a SATA drive and not an NVMe drive, which was needed by the Raspberry Pi. Oh no, of course, my mistake. Instead of searching for NVMe drive, I'd just gone for the cheapest SSD drive that seemed to have the right interface. And it turned out it's actually a SATA drive. So I now realized I needed to specify NVMe within my search. And suddenly the cheapest drive was not quite as cheap as the SATA drives I was looking at before. In fact, it made it clear why the Pimeroni SSD had been a 2280 as those are much cheaper than the 2230 or 2242 that fit on the Raspberry Pi Hat Plus. I wasn't able to find them as cheap as when I looked around, there wasn't that much difference between the 500 gigabyte and one terabyte drives. So I went for this one terabyte drive. If I use this on my server, and then it can be used for other, the more popular files to help improve the performance of those. However, that wasn't the end of my problems. So now I got the Pimeroni base working with the A data drive, but when I put the new Kingspec drive into my Raspberry Pi Hat Plus, I get a PCI error message. I tried that drive in the Pimeroni base and it works first time. So now trying different combination of drives, hats and Raspberry Pis, I figure out that the problem is with one of my Raspberry Pis. And I don't think it's because of anything I've done. While I did plug a SATA drive into the PCIe, I've also done that on the other Raspberry Pi. So it's not a problem with the P GPIO pins, as the Pimeroni base doesn't even connect to the GPIO pins. I'd already tried updating the EEPROM several times, and that is reporting as the latest version. So it appears that for some reason, one of my Raspberry Pi 5s doesn't work with the PCI adapter. From the error message, which is shown here, it appears to be that the most significant byte of data that is not matching what is expected. I suspect this is due to a physical problem with the Raspberry Pi. It could even be dust in the connector, although I don't think so, as it's not been used in a DSD environment and the connector was closed until now. Whilst I know the Raspberry Pis do go through a rigorous testing process, I've seen it in action when I visited the Sony factory in Wales. I don't think it can test for everything, and perhaps this one connector on this particular Raspberry Pi has a defective connection or solder joint or something. As frustrating as that has been, I'm just glad I got to the bottom of the problem, and I at least know I should be able to fix it by using a new Raspberry Pi. And I can still use that existing Raspberry Pi, just not with an SSD, so it's not been a huge loss. So having both hats running separately on the same Raspberry Pi, I can go back to my original plan for the video, which is to compare the two. One of the first things that most people look around is the cost. However, with these, both of the boards are around about the same price. The initial purchase cost of the Pimeroni base is about two pounds more, which isn't much really. However, when you compare with the cost of the SSD drives, 
The Pimeroni base supports the larger 2280 size SSDs, which can be quite a bit cheaper. So from a price point, pretty much a draw. Next, the most obvious thing is the size of the different boards and how they are mounted. As I've said, I like the way that Pimeroni base mounts underneath the Raspberry Pi, but it does mean that it can no longer use the official Raspberry Pi case. It does come with stick on feet, but it does not fit inside most enclosures. Whereas the Raspberry Pi Heart Plus just about fits in the official Raspberry Pi case, if you supply your own screws. I'll come on to that later. You can't use the cooling fan in the case, but it's recommended to use the active cooling solution instead. When mounted, it fits within the main part of the case and the lid just about fits on top, although does provide a gap which probably helps with airflow for cooling. The lid doesn't like clip in place or anything like that, it's just sort of sat there. If you don't need to install another hat or access the GPIO, then I do like being able to install it inside the official case, which is what I'll be using for my home server. Both of the solutions fit well on my own breadboard mounts, and if you have access to a 3D printer, you could design your own case. Having the board underneath does make it easier to access the GPIO pins though. So if you're looking to use it for connecting to another hat or a physical computing, then that is an advantage of the Pimeroni base. As standard, the Raspberry Pi Hat Plus prevents access to the GPIO pins, although it does have a pass-through GPIO connector. So you should be able to add a GPIO spacer, which will bring the pins above the height of the hat. You can still access the DSi camera stroke screen connectors on both, but they're slightly easy to access on the Pimeroni base without that PCB in the way. In terms of build quality, both have professional PCBs. The Raspberry Pi hat includes mounted nuts with a thumb screw for securing the SSD in either the 2230 or 2242 positions, whereas the NVMe base uses a standard nut and screw, which can be a little fiddly to insert. I understand that the Hat Plus has an onboard oscillator on the PCB. I'm not sure if that helps with compatibility with some SSDs, as so the Pimeroni website lists problems with certain drives, whereas the Raspberry Pi website suggests that any appropriate sized NVMe SSD should work. Is that due to the time of the oscillator or due to an improved firmware? I'm not sure, but perhaps the Raspberry Pi Hat has better drive compatibility. While still looking at build quality, I think the supplied screws and PCB standoffs from Pimeroni were much better. The Pimeroni ones are black metal screws, whereas the Raspberry Pi hat has gone with nylon mounts and screws. The biggest problem is that the ones I got don't appear to have been made correctly. It's difficult to see on this photo, but the ones in the top right of this photo has a smaller hole which doesn't appear to have been cut correctly and doesn't fit with the supplied screws. I also ended up damaging some of the supplied screws because they were so difficult to screw in. They also don't account for mounting in the Raspberry Pi case as the screws were too small. Fortunately, I had plenty of M2.5 screws and in the case of that badly made PCB mount, I used a M2 screw for that. So I was able to replace the standard screws with ones that fitted better. You may have noticed on some of my earlier photos, they use some white nylon screws those are the ones I used instead of the supplied black ones. Other than these points mentioned, there is not much between the two different solutions. Both provide a good way of adding an SSD to the Raspberry Pi, which can be accessed over the high-speed PCIe interface. In summary, if you want to use the cheaper 2280 SSDs, then the Pimeroni base fits with them. Thanks for watching. As I said, this video turned out to be very different from what I was planning, and my experience was quite frustrating. Admittedly, it was partly my own fault for not realising that I ordered the wrong drive, but that was a valuable learning point. It was more frustrating because of the problem I had with one of my Raspberry Pis. What are your thoughts? Please leave any feedback in the comments, particularly if you've had a different experience with your own Raspberry Pi. If you found any part of this video useful, please give it a like, and don't forget to subscribe. I look forward to seeing you in a future video.